Tonight, a crisis that has the whole globe shivering. Can you say, worldwide meltdown? The unveiling of the hottest name in celebrity news. Move over, Brangelina. This one's more catchy. The Donkey Kong battle continues as Clinton and Obama fight for the Democratic nomination. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. Unless you throw a dictionary at me. This is the Campbell Rapport. It's too nice. Thank you, nation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Zach Campbell. Let's get straight to the hard-hitting news, the real stuff. That, my friends, would be reality TV. And don't let the TV in the name fool you. It's real. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our reality recap. Going on this week, washed-up celebrities are still dancing. Wannabe chefs are still making crappy souffles. Geeky guys still can't get laid. Sorry, fellas. Contestants are still competing for money on an exotic island. Contestants are still competing for money in a lame house. Beautiful women are still learning how to pose fierce. Love it, ladies. Singers are still crying over Simon's cheesy remarks. And these girls are... Uh, I actually have no idea what's going on in this show, but that Lauren Conrad... Breaking news. Beyonce and Jay-Z are now married. Okay, that's not exciting, but that brings us to our word of the day. The word of the day is portmanteau. Portmanteau is the technical name for a word given by merging sounds and meanings of two different words. And we all know that when celebrities get married, they must abandon their own names for one that sounds ridiculous. Benifer, Brangelina, Tomcat, Zanessa, Lansu. The name goes on. The list does too. Today... We're going to show you how to develop a celebrity couple portmanteau. And in the end, I will reveal a new name that will have the tabloids bowing to me. First off, you must find a celebrity couple you want to annoy the hell out of. So anyone will do. Once you spot them, you must say their names together really fast. Jay-Z and Beyonce. Jay-Z and Beyonce. Jay-Z and Beyonce. Finally, you act like you're coughing out her name and... Violin. You have a portmanteau. There are now <clears throat> Zionse. Yes, I know, it's genius. You can all thank me now. That's it for your overkill entertainment celebrity gossip news type thing segment. We'll be right back, nation. Welcome back, nation. It's time to talk about global news. Global warming news. Take that, Brazil. The nation is in a frenzy, and don't think I have it all together. Sure, I may look cool, but I'm melting on the inside. To get a better idea of how the nation is coping with this catastrophe, we sent correspondent Melissa Joseph to talk with the people to figure out how they live with this mind-plaguing problem. Go ahead, Melissa. Thank you, Campbell. We're here at the University of Houston, where students are freaking out over global warming. We're going to go talk to some of them to get a clear definition of what it is we're experiencing as well as how they're going to combat this problem. Student, can you please explain to me in clear terms what this problem of global warming is? Everything's getting hot and, you know, if it's hot then I'm not comfortable in the heat. You know, it is Houston, so hot's not good. And what are you doing to combat this problem of global warming? Well, I'm going to wear a lot of sunscreen and, you know, like try to stay out the sun, wear some hats, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Staying warm, it's all you can do. We're trying to find more students at the University who have concerns, terrors, nightmares. Student, student, can I ask you a few questions, please? Sure. All yeah. right. What do you think about this crisis that we call global warming? Oh, you know, I, I guess it's scary. I hear a lot about it on the news and stuff, um, but that's really all I know. And does it scare you? I mean, are you frightened? Not really. I mean, I have other things to worry about more than global warming. I mean, why worry about something when it may or may not happen, you know? So you're, you're saying you don't necessarily believe what Al Gore says? Oh, no way. I didn't vote for him, so I'm not going to listen to what he says, so no biggie. Al Gore haters apparently have a different opinion on global warming. 
we found more students to share their concerns about this worldwide crisis of global warming. Can you tell me, student, in your own words, what is global warming? According to my textbook, global warming is the end of the planet coming to destruction, or something like that, according to my textbook. That sounds awfully graphic. Ma'am, could you please explain to us what this crisis with global warming is? Um, global warming is, is, thanks, global warming is the atmosphere getting hotter, like Houston gets hot in April, like my hair is already beginning to kink because it's so humid outside. Like, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it's right? really kinky. It's re yeah, it's yeah. just, it's so annoying whenever you try to have like a straight hairstyle and you spend like three hours doing it. And then Boo, it's global warming. <laughs> that sounds like quite a crisis. Students seem disgruntled. Perhaps they need a clear explanation. Can you give it to them, Zach? Reporting live from the University of Houston, this is Melissa Joseph. Back to you, Campbell. Thank you, Melissa. According to hot specialist Al Gore, quote, the Arctic is experiencing faster melting. If this were to go, sea level worldwide would go up 20 feet, end quote. Basically, we're looking at this. Don't worry, Lady Liberty, I'll save you. Speaking of torches, get ready for the 2008 Summer Olympics. Athletes from all over the world are preparing for ownage in Beijing. We caught up with U.S. track phenomenon, Mikhail Roberts, as he trains for the 400-meter dash. You know, I really think this is my year, you know. Really excited about the Olympics this year. You know, a lot of good training, you know. I'm in the best shape of my life. U.S. is gonna go all the way this year, no doubt about it, you know. We interrupt this message because no one cares. It's true, and you know it. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll attack the world of politics. But first, check out how Hillary attacks. Warning, this content may not be appropriate for children. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. But there's a phone in the White House and it's ringing. Something's happening in the world. Your vote will decide who answers that call. Whether it's someone who already knows the world's leaders, knows the military, someone tested and ready to lead in a dangerous world. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. Who do you want answering the phone? I'm Hillary Clinton and I approve this message. And we're back. Now it's time for a presidential update. Clinton and Obama are still battling for the coveted spot of the Democratic nomination. In her own words, Hillary said, when it comes to finishing the fight, Rocky and I have a lot in common. It's true. They both keep throwing punches long after most people have lost interest. As you saw during the break, Hillary Clinton recently ran an ad implying that Barack Obama doesn't know how to answer the telephone. Some say this ad is silly. What kind of big economic emergencies break out in the middle of the night? But what if it's something more urgent? It's 3 a.m. and your children are asleep. Meanwhile, this beautiful Golden Cross pendant is advertised on QVC. But if Hillary Clinton doesn't call in the next 30 minutes, she won't get the matching earrings for free. Barack Obama might let this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity pass him by. Call now. Oh, believe me, I called, but Obama won't take this bashing sitting down or sleeping. He joined up with the McCain team to respond to Clinton's attack with a joint commercial. It's three in the afternoon. Markets are open, courts are in session, and Congress is at work. In the White House, a phone is ringing, but Hillary Clinton is asleep because she was up at three in the morning. Barack Obama and John McCain well-rested, normal office hours. Burn! Well, that's it for our show. Good night, nation.